Hello. In this video, I'm going to be doing a technical explanation of IPFS. So what is IPFS? IPFS is a distributed system for storing and accessing files, websites, applications, and data. What's different about IPFS versus more commonly used internet protocols is that it uses content addressing instead of location addressing. So for an example of location addressing, we have this URL here. Um, and to get this page, we would resolve this domain name with DNS, so we're resolving a location. And then based on this location address, we would get this page about aardvarks. Um, so what's different about IPFS is you, instead of having a location-based address, you can take your page about aardvarks and um, create a content address, which is with this content identifier, which is effectively a hash um, that represents your data. And then you can share this content identifier and distribute this page peer to peer. Um, so how is this done? So files in IPFS are stored in a Merkle DAG or Merkle directed acyclical graph, um, which is essentially the same thing as a hash tree or a Merkle tree. Um, so to understand what this is, we first need to understand hashing. And hashing is when you have a function that maps some pieces of data, so for example, the string hello world, to a representation of that data. And for our purposes, our hash functions need to have these characteristics. They're deterministic, which means the same input message always returns the exactly same, exactly the same output hash. They're uncorrelated, so a small change in the message should generate a completely different hash. They're unique. It's infeasible to generate the same hash from two different messages, and it's one way. It's infeasible to guess or calculate the input message from its hash. Um, and so what's being done with this Merkle DAG is that we take blocks of data from our file, and then we can hash that data and then store that hash in another block of data and then um, take a hash of that block with the hashes in it, make a new block, and then we can construct a tree like this. Um, so if we have this top hash here, we're able to verify the entire tree or directed acyclical graph of data. Um, so to actually share this peer-to-peer, -peer, we use a distributed hash table. Um, so IPFS uses an algorithm called CADEMLIA Kadem, um, for its distributed hash table, um, which has been around a while, and um, you can read about it on Wikipedia. Um, but the basic idea here is that if you have these, if each of these lines here represents both the node in the distributed hash table and a content identifier, um, say we wanted to find this piece of content, but we only know about this node, um, nodes will have lookup information for other nodes. And so say this node here knows about node 7, and we're looking for node A. We can go from here to 7, and then say 7 knows about 9, and so we go to 9, and then 9 knows about A, and we've found our content, and then we can download this content um, from this node, and then verify it with our content identifier. Um, and then this lookup is O of log N, um, and that's because these content identifiers can be thought of as a ordered list, um, and we can search through an ordered list by um, approaching the piece of content we're looking for in a greedy fashion. So if we're looking for A, we can go from zero to the midpoint of seven, and then the midpoint of these two, and then the midpoint coming back, and then finally find our content. 
So as this list grows um, to n um, content identifiers or nodes, we're able to traverse it with approaching um, log n hops. Um, and so it's really cool about this being combined with the Merkle DAG is that say I were distributing a Python library as a directory in IPFS, I would have my hash for the directory, which points to um, my dependencies folder, and then I have some Python dependency stored in IPFS. Um, that dependency is going to have a content identifier itself, and potentially if someone else was distributing an entirely separate file that included the same dependency, we would be able to share that peer-to-peer -peer between ourselves, even though our top-level content is something different. Um, so for accessing IPFS, it's a little involved. Um, you often have to do it through gateways, like they're saying here, um, which connects to the this Merkle DAG system. Um, I was able to publish a file using this estuary project. Um, it's not too bad, but you do have to compile this yourself. Um, and this is still connecting to another service to actually interact with the Merkle DAG. Um, so comparing IPFS to BitTorrent, um, BitTorrent it takes a more um, kind of centralized, decentralized approach. So with BitTorrent, you are normally, instead of using the distributed hash table, you'll have a list of trackers, which are sites that you have a location address for, and then you will find other people who are sharing the same file on one of these tracker websites and um, use that in place of the distributed hash table. Um, this is a little bit simpler and easier, um, but at the cost of not being as decentralized. Um, so if you're building a Web3 application, IPFS is probably a better bet. Um, but if you just want to share a file with your friends in a straightforward way, BitTorrent is probably going to be easier and more stable. And BitTorrent is also um, adding some um, functionality for distributed hash tables. So in the future, you may be able to use those as well. All right. Thanks for watching.